Hey fellow Vault Wearers, it's Angry Turtle and yes, Carnivore is back! So if you are not familiar too much with mutations in Fallout 76, you can be either Carnivore or Herbivore. Or in other words, you can be a vegan or you can eat meat and everything else. But why is Carnivore back? The reason for that is small changes with every patch benefiting Carnivore with culmination to those changes in the last patch. I think Carnivore is truly better now than Herbivore for most cases. So uh, let's start first what is boosting food so you will not be confused when I will show you all the crazy high value. First, Carnivore is boosting food. It doubles. All the Carnivore classified food will be doubled. Now it says three times as much benefits. That's because I'm on a team and I have strength in numbers. Strength in numbers is boosting mutations by 25%. So realistically you are getting 2.5 times the benefit from it. The game is just rounding it, but it's still 2.5 times benefit from meat dishes. Then on top of everything, it's fixed for a while, but Backwoodsman 6 will boost effects from cooked food. It's vegan food and carnivore food, but the point is it's currently correctly working with carnivore mutation and meat-based meals. Almost all of them. There are exceptions, but almost all of them. So look what is possible. Look at those values I have at this moment from the food. Intelligence 11, luck 11, max HP 75, max health 150, and then max endurance 11. Endurance is health in quick translation, so that's additional almost 60 health, 55 health, so over 200 to my health. So in other words, two food items will boost my health and make me a super tank just because I ate two meat dishes. Then you can boost your strength. Strength can actually go higher than that. I just don't have the particular food that can give me 11 too. So I don't have every single best food that you can see here, but it's already a lot. And you can get most of the, this food really easily. And I will show you in a moment how. Now, uh, next, agility boosted. It could go a little bit higher if I would have a Scourge Beast Lung. And surprisingly, what I discover now, the birthday cake do work with Backwoodsman. So when you have Backwoodsman magazine, birthday cake is actually better than coffee. It gives you more AP refresh too, not only charisma boost. Then look at this carry weight boost, 112, thanks to my look fillet for one hour, 30 minutes. Like a lot of those buffs is one hour or more. Then 11 to perception. Melee damage, 319%. So basically, I take one food buff and I'm instantly a melee build. I don't need to change any single perk. If I use a food buff, I'm a melee build. Without the magazine, it will be 220%, something like that, or 210%. So it's still a lot. Still one food and you are a melee build. As easy as that. Tasty Squirrel is still currently works, so 38% to experience. It's awesome. It's amazing power. And this carry weight combined with strength of the carnivore, I'm easily reaching close to 600 carry weight. And it can go higher as I didn't use carry weight booster. So that's additional benefit. You cannot boost your carry weight so much as if you are a herbivore. Now over 600 carry weight. Could go higher, but we are not going about maximizing carry weight currently. Just healthy amount of around 500 carry weight for most part is enough for me. Now, how you can get all those amazing buffs? Of course, you can craft them at your cooking station. The recipes have changed. Like in the past, there was no melee buff like that. You needed to stack seven different buffs to achieve the result. But now if you open the meat and especially if you scroll for tasty dishes, so maton, Meat pie, tasty mutant hounds, two, 
Uh, then uh, was one more, but it's not very important. Oh, I do actually have one lung, so I could boost my agility, as you can see, by 11, which is a lot, as agility translates to more action points in VATS. Now, back to the melee damage. So the melee damage that's stated in here says 85, but that's before it's being boosted by your mutation, by your magazine, by your strength in numbers perk. So this 85, as you are able to see, can easily turn into 320%. So that's a lot. But you can probably notice that it's rather expensive to craft this. Mutant Hunt Meat is easy to farm. The Peppa is a little bit harder. Starlight Berries, uh, not hard. Not actually hard because you have the deep. I will show you. If you want to craft it, you can uh, just quickly on the map if you are looking for those ingredients. So the pepper. Helvetia is awesome. There is a restaurant that you can visit and grab the pepper from uh, as well. Some pepper can be found outside in Foundation, just on the tables and next to sunny trading stations. So very easy to grab. And then you have this place called the Deep that you can actually access way easier from the Wild Spring Lookout location. I hope you know the location, but inside you will find all those berries that you need, the Starlight Berries, a lot, and that's just one location. But there is easier way. There is easier way to get those buffs like Cranberry Meatball Grinder and so on. You have allies, and you can probably notice I have this platform. I already purchased from my allies, so I will need to hop a server oh and there will be one more info because if you are familiar with carnivore you are probably already asking in comment section but bear with me so that's platform form and ally for ally swapping but let me hop the server so i will show you why i have it so there are two reasons i hop the server one to show you how to easily get very expensive carnivore food and other one to announce the best part Look at that, Cranberry Meatball Grinder remains after the server hop. And you can as well, you were able to see the change in the values when I joined a team. When I have teammate versus when I don't have a teammate. So Cranberry Meatball Grinder is working. If you are not familiar with the problem, in the past, wherever you died or hopped the server, the Cranberry Meatball Grinder buff was disappearing. Now. It's persistent. It has been fixed. Like, as you can see, all the buffs that I had are still here. I didn't lose any buffs by server hopping. And now, how to easily get those buffs? You have two vendors that you can place at your cam. I uh, should probably, since they upgraded Carnivore, if you were watching my ally tier list, I would boost them up by one grade, both of them, because of this change. Now, first, is Yasmin's. And why do I have a stairs on this platform? That's because when I place it, she will spawn somewhere. And thanks to this stair, that should slow her down from accessing the platform too easily. Oh, she's running. So she cannot run on stairs. She will slow down. So if I fail to catch her, it's very important that she do not reach her station. Now, we need to talk about cooking, and then there will be a buy recipes option. I'm not really looking for recipes, but look at that. Dog meat steak, the great endurance buff, 18 caps. Uh, then, smoke my look filet with carry weight of 100, thanks to magazine, of course, and everything. 69 caps. So instead of me spending insane amount of resources to craft those buffs, I just check with her and take whatever buff I need. And as well, sweet potatoes too, and so on. Every item that regenerates your, your health is currently safe to use as it's not stopping you from fast travel. So if you want to use it, you can. All those are cheap. Occasionally, she will sell as well a carnivore melee damage boost. It's not always, like her list is randomized, recipes are randomized, and food she's selling is randomized. Now, after you finish shopping, you quickly re-enter the build menu, remove this item before she will climb the stairs, and then you can switch to grandma. 
Grandma is a second vendor offering a rare carnivore food. And she will spawn somewhere in the same way, so I just wait here. Uh, oh, uh, that's a, that's, that can happen. That's a bug. When she just directly teleports to her station, that's caused a problem because then I need to bother with scrapping her station only after she gets up off the chair. That is inconvenience, but one of the way to go around with it is using two different cam slots, so you can still fix it. Luckily, I only need to use those two vendors. So you can see she's selling a very rare buffs. Unfortunately, she's selling uh, herbivore buff this time around, brain bombs and flower tea. From time to time, she will sell me and cranberry meatball grinder. So it's not every server, hope, but they are selling it. And caps are way easier to get than a lot of meat and other stuff. As long as you remember to check those two vendors, Every time you log in and hop server occasionally, you will have all those rare buffs that you need with caps. On top of that, a little bit less rare buffs, when you need them, are available at Nuka World on Tour. That's one of new vendors too. So when you spawn at Nuka World on Tour, just turn left. And that's the vendor that is selling indeed a lot of good uh, buffs. For example, Oh, the company tea is in the camp, and as you can see, company tea does regenerate your AP, even if you are a carnivore. So, I have tea machine at my camp. Someone just have too much, so they sold it here. Uh, that's additional little tip. If you see a spoil bar on a vendor item, this basically means someone sold it to the vendor, and it's not vendor native item. Vendor native item will not have a spoil bar, so it will be always full condition when you purchase it. And this is one of the awesome items. Radroach on a stick, 8 agility. It is not, unfortunately, not boosted by the magazine. Backwoodsman magazine is not boosting it, so with or without the magazine, it's 8. But it's very cheap and good boost. Then she's selling a Galper stuff food that can give you extra strength. The base value is 5, with magazine it's 8, but it can be purchased, so that's very convenient. She's selling a basic uh, max HP buffs that are 113 with the magazine. Then she's selling red scorpion kebabs if you need extra energy resistance and yao guai pastry for carry weight. Unfortunately, this carry weight boost is not affected by magazine. The good news is... Without the magazine, it's still 75, so it's a really good carry weight boost that you can purchase and last for an hour, if I'm not mistaken. So, those are easy carnivore buffs available at one vendor, and you have two camp vendors with more carnivore buffs available with a total of real insanity of boost to your health, strength, all your special, basically, every special add carry weight and one buff to make you a melee build like look at that at this moment i have zero melee build perks and i have zero melee build mutations but if i equip my red apple look at the damage values this one melee buff make me an ab absolute monster as a melee the overgrown gauntlet Vampire, 426. That's because this one melee buff. The regular machete, 226. That's Vampire Machete. It's a lot. It's a lot and you don't need to do much. So, let me know now. Did I convince you to try a carnivore for a little bit? Or are you dedicated vegan? Uh, in Fallout 76, of course. We are still talking about the game, not the real life. Which is the path for you, carnivore or herbivore? Let me know. And that being said, thank you a lot for watching and see you all in the next one.